Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to do a beginner's guide to setting up the Wii U. So we're going to take it right from the very beginning on how to connect up all the cables to the TV and then taking it all the way through to setting up a game. Now this console here, although it is used, it's been reset so it's exactly the same as when it came out of the box when it was brand new. So this will be a real-time setup of the Wii U. Now this particular model is the 32 gigabyte one, so that's the black one, which is known as the Deluxe. You can also get a white one, the setup will be the same, the only difference is the white one only has eight gigabytes, so if you were buying a lot of online games, then you might run out of storage very quickly. You might even find on some of the bigger games, like Zelda Breath of the Wild, that you won't even be able to download it because there's not enough storage on the device, so you'd have to use an external hard drive, but I will do a separate video on that. Now, the other thing is on the deluxe model you do get other items so for example you get this little stand here to rest a gamepad in and you also get these little stands here that you can rest the Wii U console in when it's vertical but apart from that the same setup will apply whether you go for the white basic version or the black deluxe model okay so first things first we're going to be installing and connecting the console so I'm just going to run you through the different parts of it this thing here is actually the Wii U console. This is where you will put your disc into, and this is where you will bring the cables out of into the TV. This is the gamepad here, and, and this is a little stand that you can use as a charging dock. You don't have to have this. You can just plug your charger straight into this port here, and then it will charge up the gamepad. I've got an HDMI lead to connect it up to the TV, but I'll also show you other leads if your TV doesn't support HDMI. I've got a sensor bar there, that's so we can use the Wii remotes. So they don't come with it, but it is compatible with the older Wii remotes. This is the charger here to charge up the gamepad, and this is the power supply here for the actual console. So let's get started and connect this all up. Now first things first, what we have to do is we have to put this on charge because it might not have been played with in a while and the battery might be completely flat. So we're going to get our charger and we're going to plug it in. So it's this one here, the small one. And if you have a look at the end here, it looks like that. And all we're going to do is plug it into the top port here, like so. And if you have a look, you've got the little orange light on there to show that it's charging. Now, if you want to use this little dock here, then what you can do is plug the same cable in to the back of the dock. And then every time you rest this onto here, if you have a look there, when that goes down there, two little prongs come up and they touch these little copper strips here and that will also charge it. So have a look there, you can see now it's charging. But on the basic model, you're gonna to have to use this unless you wanna buy one of these separately. So now we've got that on charge, let's connect up the Wii U console. Okay, so if we have a look at the back of this, you will see that this is where the power supply goes. This is where the sensor bar goes. In fact, it's all labeled up. This is where your HDMI goes out to the TV. You've got some USB ports here. If you wanted to use something like an ethernet adapter, so if you didn't wanna rely on the Wi-Fi then you can actually plug in an ethernet adapter that looks like this. You don't get this in the kit, but you can buy these separately very cheaply. So at the moment, as it stands, you have to have a Wi-Fi connection to be able to do the online things on the Wii U. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna plug in the HDMI lead. The HDMI lead looks like this. This will be different than the one you actually get with the Wii U. This is from Nintendo Switch this one, but all HDMI leads will work as long as they're high speed ones. So if you were to have a look at here, it says high speed HDMI. So we're gonna plug one end into there and you can see by the shape of it, it will only go one way. So if you look at the top there, you can see that it's wider. So it's not gonna plug in the wrong way. It has to go that way. Don't force it. It will just go in nice and gently once you've got it the right way around. So now we have to go to our TV and we have to find out what's on the back of our TV. So if we have a look here at this TV, I've got quite a few ports here. So I've got two HDMI ports there. I've also got here red, blue and green connectors and I've also got the composite down the bottom as well, which is yellow, white and red. So on this one I'm lucky and I can use the HDMI because this will always give you the best connection. So go with the HDMI if you can, if you can't then go for the component also known as RGB because of red, green and blue. 
And lastly, if you haven't got that and your TV is very old, then you're going to have to use composite, which, which is yellow for video, white and red for the audio. So normally you would only get them now on the very old TVs. In this case, we're going to be using an HDMI. So what we're going to do is get the other end and we're going to make a note of where we're plugging it into. So I've got HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. Let's plug it into the one because they're both empty. If you've already got something like a set-top box or another console in HDMI 1, it's not a problem. Just use HDMI 2. The other option is, of course, to go via the AV route and then either get a component or a composite lead. Now, you might be wondering what those leads look like. So I'm going to show you here now. So like I just said, definitely go with HDMI if you've got the option. But if you haven't got the option, then you can get these cables very cheaply. And the same ones will work whether they're with the Wii or the Wii U. So if you see them advertised just for the Wii, then that's fine as well. So this one here would be like the component one, which is the R RGB, red, green and blue. And then you have the right and left audio here, the other red and white. And then the, the worst lead is this composite one, which is yellow for video and white and red for the audio. Now, if you have to use one of these, let's get rid of the HDMI port for a minute. Can you see there's a port here that says AV multi out, this one here. And that's the one that would fit these leads. So whether it's a composite one, like so, and then you would plug the other ones into here. So yellow, white, and red. Resolution-wise, you're not going to get much over 480 with that, while with the HDMI, you're going to get 1080. Now, if you want component, that's going to be this lead here. Now, it's slightly more complicated on this one because the red, you could get mixed up, the red audio, with the red from the actual picture. So if you have a look here, a good way to tell is... See these three leads are together here, and then these two are together. So if you have a look at the bottom here, although there's no marking, sometimes you have a little tag around these two, I know now that these three here will be for the picture because they're all together, red, blue, and green. And then these two would be for the audio because they're together. So let's plug these in. So we're gonna be doing red there, blue there, green there, and then the red, and the white down the bottom. So if you have a look closely there, that's what it's gonna look like on this particular TV. So these top three is gonna give the picture, and then the bottom two is gonna be the audio. And you can see now why that would be better than composite, because with composite, you're getting all the picture just down one cable, while here, you've got three separate colors, so it's gonna look a lot better. And then the other end of that is this end here, and again, that would just plug in to the AV out. You can see how it's shaped, it's got a little cutout at one corner, so it has to go in that way round. It can't go in the wrong way round. Okay, so that's the component and the composite and the HDMI. So I'm gonna go with HDMI because I'm lucky enough to have those ports there. And you'll find that most of the new TVs do have plenty of HDMI ports. Okay, so we've connected up the HDMI into HDMI 1 on the TV. It's important that you remember that because later on when we're picking the source, we have to pick the correct one. So now we're going to be connecting up the power supply. So what I'm going to do is get this yellow one here and it goes into the yellow connector here. So again, you can't get it wrong. It's got a little cutout there so it can only go in one way. Like so. And now we're going to plug the other end of it in to our power supply. So this is the power supply here for the actual console part. So it's the big brick. I'm gonna plug that in there like that. Your plugs will look different depending on what country you're from. Right, okay. So that's basically it connected up. I've got my little red light on there so it's ready to be turned on. Now it's up to you. If you wanna have it vertical, then if you have a look at these little stands that come with the deluxe model, they fit onto these little half moons here. So you just need to put it on there like so and then there's also one at the back as well. There's a little hole at the bottom there to fit onto there. That will be in the vertical position. If you've got the basic one or you don't want to use these, then it's absolutely fine to have it down flat like that as long as you have it the right way up. So it's a Wii U so you can read. So don't have it upside down because then you could end up with problems with the disc. Make sure it's that way round.
Now, if you were to have it on long carpet, on carpet like this is not ideal, but I'd probably get away with it because the pile's quite short. If you were gonna rest it onto a carpet, then I really would advise resting it on something like a book because then it's less likely to overheat, especially if you have long piles, then it's gonna be right up against the Wii U and also you've got more chance of getting dust and carpet fibers in the vents here. And you wanna keep those vents free if possible. Even when they are free, you will still find that you will need to clean them out once every six months or so because they will get full of dust. But on a carpet, they're gonna get dustier a lot quicker. So if you're lying it down flat, then put it on something like a book or something hard just to keep it off the fibers. But in this instance here, I'm just gonna use it in the vertical position because it's just easier to show for the video. So now we're gonna set up the sensor bar, this thing here, and that's gonna allow us to use the old Wii remotes on it. So these are pointing devices where you can move around the screen just by using motion control. On the gamepad down here, it has got a sensor strip built into it here. So you can actually use this instead of the sensor bar when you've got it in handheld mode. So you can point this at the sensor strip and it will also work on the screen here. But for the TV, we're gonna need a sensor bar. If you've got the basic pack and this doesn't come with it, you can pick up these really cheaply for a few pounds. So you might as well get one because it's handy. Now you can place this below the TV or above the TV. In this instance, if it's on the ground, then you need to be placing it above the TV. If, for example, your TV was already on a shelf somewhere, then it would be fine to place it below. But make sure it's facing outwards, so it's not at an angle like that. You need this to be where you're facing it. Also, if you've got it on the top there, make sure it doesn't go around the back of the TV and point upwards. It needs to be straight so it can register your movements properly when you're using this. Now the reason we're installing the sensor bar and also the Wii remotes is because the Wii U is actually backwards compatible with Wii games. So on here you can play Wii U discs and also Wii discs. So Wii U and Wii from the original Wii from the four. Now don't just dismiss this, there's some really good games for the Wii and they're getting cheaper and cheaper now. So you can have a lot of fun because you're not paying full price for them anymore. You can get plenty of games for five to 10 pounds. These two games are slightly more expensive because they're games that are popular. Right, let's set this up. So what we're gonna do is, again, if you have a look at the back of the Wii U, we've got a port here in red and they've color coded this as well, kind of like an orangey red. And again, it's got a cutout on one corner so you can't plug it in wrong. And don't just rest it in like that, you have to push it in fully, otherwise it's not gonna work. So you think that's in there, but it's not. You need to then push it in so you can hear that noise. And now that's in. And then we need to put this side facing us. So not the silver side, but the black side facing us. So I'm gonna place that on the TV here, and I'm gonna put it roughly in the middle of the TV because that's where we're gonna be sitting. And then what you can do is, once you're happy with the setup, you can just get a little cable tie or a little rubber band and you can just get rid of the excess cables because remember, this is made so you can have the sensor bar quite far away from the actual Wii U console. But in this instance here, it's just a bit of a mess behind there. So personally, I would do a bit of cable management and tidy that all up. Okay, so now we finally get to the turning on of the system. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna turn on the Wii U by hitting the power button here. Just giving it a little tap like that and it will go to blue. And now we need to also turn on the TV and we need to put it to the correct source. So I'm turning it on now. To change it over to HDMI 1, you need to have a look at your remote control. You will see it says input and then on, for example, another TV, it might be known as source. So this is a Samsung TV in a different room, the remote control from that, and here it's called source. So you're looking for something on your remote control that's called input or source. And then what we need to do is we need to tap it and we need to move it to HDMI 1. So if you have a look there, we've got a whole list of inputs. If, for example, you were gonna be using the red, green, and blue, the component needs, you're gonna to go to this one that says YPBPR. If you were gonna use the composite, which is the yellow, red, and white leads, you know, that the worst possible combination, we're gonna be going to AV. But in this instance, we're using HDMI, so we're going to HDMI 1, because that's where I plugged it into. If you plugged it into 2, you would then be going to HDMI 2. So I've gone to there, and now I'm pressing OK. 
and hopefully now it should come up with the Wii U menu. Right, okay, now we need to go to the gamepad here, and if you have a look, it's still charging, so I'm just gonna leave it plugged into the charger for the time being. When it's finished charging, it will go to clear, so it will just turn itself off. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna turn the gamepad on, and I'm gonna actually move the charging cable up to the top here, because then I can leave it charging while I explain to you what's going on. So all we have to do is press on here where it says power. You can see that that goes to blue and it's saying here turn on the TV and Wii U console then switch to the input setting on the Wii U on the TV. Right well we've done that now so what we now have to do is if you have a look it says what to do on screen here it says turn turn the Wii U gamepad on then press the sync button on the Wii U console. So the sync button is over here it's there and the sync button on the gamepad is this red one here. Now if you're struggling to get to that one, all you need to do is pull out the stylus, which is up here. If your stylus is missing, then all you need to do is get a little pen lid or something and just press in that hole to make it sync. So I'm gonna press sync here. And now it says here, check the Wii U gamepad is turned on, then press the sync button on the controller and enter the four symbol shown below. Like I said, we're gonna get the stylus out, we're gonna turn it round, and then we're gonna hit the sync button. So I'm just gonna press it once, like that. And now it says here, touch the symbols in order that they are displayed on the screen from left to right. So if you have a look there, it starts with a heart. If the symbols are not displayed on the TV screen, press the sync button on the Wii U console. Well, we've already done that. So now if I have a look on the screen up there, it starts with a heart, so I'm gonna press heart. Then it's got, a spade, so I'm gonna press spade. And then we got two more hearts, one, two. And it says connecting to the Wii U console. Now this is working wirelessly back to here and it's using a five gigahertz wireless network between here and here. And that's why it allows it to communicate so quick because this is the clever thing down here, the actual console. This is doing all the work and it's just streaming the signal over to here via the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal. Right, it says the Wii U gamepad is now ready. Next, touch the screen to start initial setup of the console. Instructions will appear on the TV. So I'm just gonna use my finger, and it says language. Which language do I want? Well, in my instance, it's gonna be English, but you're gonna pick the language that you need. The language setting will now be applied to the Wii U gamepad. This take, may take up to four minutes. The Wii U gamepad screen may turn off briefly at the start and end of the process. This is normal behavior and is not a fault. Okay, so now it's setting the language. Okay, so that didn't take four minutes, it took a couple of seconds. Press okay. Now I've got to choose my country. So I'm going down to United Kingdom. And I'm using this little scroller here, or I can just move up and down here, and then tap. From now on, you will be able to turn your console on or off by using the power button on the Wii U gamepad. So we don't have to keep going over to the console here to press off, we can just do it from this button here and it will shut the system down. And now it says to go next, so I can either press here or press A. And now we've got to do the date. Now we've got to pick the time, and while we're doing this, it also gives us further instructions on the TV. So right now it says, enter the current time. Some software will use this time setting, ensure that the time is correct. Okay, so the time right now is 6.49, and it just told us there, detailed explanations are displayed on the screen. Some explanations can be scrolled down using the right analog stick. Let me just quickly tell you about the controls before I do this. You've got your left analog stick and your right analog stick. You've got your front facing camera there and also the sensor strip. You've got your directional pad here. This is for putting on your amiibo. So let's say if you're playing a game that allows amiibos, a lot of them do, you can just place this onto here or whatever amiibo you've got and then it will register that amiibo. We've got speakers here and here, left little speaker, right little speaker. We've got a home button and we've also got a microphone. This is our battery indicator. This one here is to control our TV, so we can actually use this as a remote control for our TV when we set it up. 
You've got your plus button and minus button, also start and select. You've got your X, A, Y and B buttons here. Up here, we have the right button, we have the left button, we've got the Z, L and Z, R. We've got our stylus here. We've also got our volume. So as you can hear, there's nothing now. And now we have volume. So that's a little slider switch there. We've got our power adapter here. We've also got a headphone jack here, so we can actually plug in headphones. So if you want to use this late at night and you don't want to disturb anybody, plug your headphones in here and then you can just mute your TV and then you can hear everything that's going on here and still play it on TV or use it in handheld mode. Most games allow you to play on the TV or the gamepad, but not all of them. So you will need to check if you specifically want it to play on the gamepad, then not every single game does allow you to do it, but the majority 95% plus do allow you to do it. And that basically is it. We've got a sync button here. This is for charging and this port is unused at the moment and will continue to be unused because Nintendo are no longer making games for this system. So let's set the time. The time now is 6.52. And I'm doing 24 hour clock. You can see here that it's a 24 hour clock. So that's gonna be six. I'm going to go this way around because it's quicker. 6.52. Confirm. Date and time have now been set. I also missed out that there was a home button here. So this will take you back to the home screen. Automatically configuring TV display. On this TV here, it will allow 1080p, which is the maximum display that we can have out of the Wii U. And it's really nice 1080p. Aspect ratio 16 by 9 because obviously it's a widescreen TV and the connection is HDMI. If no picture is displayed on the TV or if you wish to change the settings, touch TV display settings. So pretend now it's not working. You can see here it says use the gamepad to continue and it looks fine. If you didn't have it, let's say if your TV only supported 720p, you would go to here and then you would click on HDMI and then you could change it to 720p and now it's going to change it. I'm going to change it back because I can have 1080p. So I'm going to put that, is the picture visible? Yes. Set resolution to 720. I'm now going to change it back. TV display settings. You can see as well, it's gone smaller now because the TV can handle 1080p. If, for example, you were using those AV leads that I showed you earlier, then you would be hitting that one there and then you would have a choice of 480i or 576i if you were going to be using a SCART lead. So in the UK and other countries, European countries, you would be able to use a SCART lead. So when I showed you two leads, which was component and composite, so the component had five connectors, composite had three connectors, there's also a SCART lead that you can buy as well, but I can't show you that because I haven't got one, and most of the world don't use it. So let me go back. I'm going to go to HDMI. I'm going to change it back to 1080p, not I, do P, that will be the best one. And now it's setting the resolution. And there you go, you can see now it's taken up the full screen and it looks good. So it's set resolution to 1080p. And now we're going to go to next. You can use your Wii U gamepad to control your TV if you set up the TV remote feature. Do you want to set up the TV remote? Well, I'm going to say yes because I want to see how that works. First things first, I'm just going to lower down the volume on the TV because it's a little bit loud. Now, good thing about this is the sound comes out of the TV and the gamepad as well, so it's, uh, it's nice. Right, I'm going to try and set it up now. It might not recognise this particular TV because it's a kind of unbranded TV. It does say Logic down there, but I have other TVs in the house with exactly the same controller and they're unbranded, so it might not work. But let's try it. Specify which devices you want to control with the Wii U gamepad. So I just want to do TV only. If you maybe had a cable or satellite set-top box or a DVR, then you can control TV and other devices. But I'm going to do TV only. Now, select the first letter of the TV manufacturer's name. I'm pretty sure it's not going to recognise this. L. And then we're going to go to L-O. So you can see it's... Oh, hold on. Oh, it has got it, amazingly. Logic, here, with the K. After turning on your TV, 
test each of the buttons on the right to confirm everything is working. Right, so let's do the volume up and let's have a look. Right, so it's not working and if I go to input, no, nothing's working. So let me go to didn't work. Try again using the same manufacturer and the following signal type. Right, let's try now. Oh, still not working. Right, didn't work. Try again, so this is signal type 3. No, it still didn't work. If you have a look here, it says 6 of 22, so this is going to take quite some time. So I'm just going to fast forward through this bit now until I get the one that's working. Excellent, right, I've gone to signal type 7. And right now I can see the volumes going up in the corner up there. And if I go to input, it's brought up my input. So amazingly, it has actually worked. Let me just change that to the correct input, otherwise it's going to go off. Right, so I'm going to put worked. Configures as follows. There we go, so it's signal type 7. So that might take a while because it could, in theory, go all the way up to 22. Right, press TV to access TV remotes. So let's press TV. And now if you have a look here, we've got our volume and this will work as our remote control for the TV. So that's really good now. So we don't have to worry about this control when we're playing the Wii U. We can just use this to control the TV, which is pretty good. Right, so I'm going to close TV remote by just hitting that one or you can just press TV again. Now go to OK. Setup for TV remote is now complete. If you find any buttons that don't work, try changing the signal type in the system settings. Obviously, I haven't tried every single button on there, but I'm hoping they will work. If you are using a sensor bar, please configure the settings for where the sensor bar is placed. Okay. So it's above the TV in this instance here, so I'm going to just do above the TV. Position set to above the TV. That's just because it will adjust it ever so slightly. If it was below the TV, it wants to know it's below the TV. So you will just go with whatever you've got. If it's below the TV, obviously, you will go to below and above, above. Okay, now we've just got to agree the license agreement. The console internet connection will now be set up. Select the network that the console should use to connect to the internet. Right, okay, now... Remember I said this is Wi-Fi only, unless we plug that adapter into the back. Well, let me just quickly talk about the internet side of things. In the UK, we call this a router. In the rest of the world, you will know it as a router. Basically, it's what your service provider gives you to give you the internet. Now, this will provide the Wi-Fi signal. We need to make sure that the Wii U is connected up to the correct Wi-Fi signal. When I have a look here, it's given me a whole list of them, not just mine, because I live in a built-up area, and as you can see, I've got one of mine at the top, but I've also got numerous other networks down here. When you see these names here, this is called the SSID off the network. And if you were to have a look at the back of your router, this is just a sample one. This isn't my actual router that I'm going to connect to. If you have a look, it says wireless SSID. So if this was plugged in, on that list, it would say BT Hub 5 JZ6H. And then we will need to enter in the wireless key. So when we were to click on this one here, we then need to enter in the wireless key, which is this one here. So you need to go to your router or router and have a look at the back of it. It might be easy like this and you might have a card that you can just take with you to the Wii U. If not, take a picture on your phone, just memorise it or scribble it down on a bit of paper unless this is right next to your Wii U and you can just copy it directly. If, for example, you didn't want to rely on the wireless signal and you wanted to have a wired connection, a wired connection will always be best. If this is placed very close to your Wii U console, then you're going to get a good Wi-Fi signal. But if this is a couple of floors away from it or at the back of the house and this is at the front of the house, you could struggle with Wi-Fi, in which case then a wired connection would be better. Now, a wired connection is basically an Ethernet connection and the cables look like this. So this is an Ethernet cable here. I think this is a 10 meter one and it's a kind of square shape with that clip on the top. So what you would do is you would pick one of the ports, it doesn't matter which one it is, as long as on this one it's the yellow ones, not the red ones. So it's all empty, so I can just plug it into port 1. And then on the other end, I would plug this in to 
a little adapter like this. So with this adapter here, I can plug it in like so, and then I can plug this into one of the USB ports. I forgot to mention earlier that there's two USB ports at the front and also an SD card reader. But if you have a look closely there, you can see two USB ports and the SD card reader, which is underneath this flap. To get into the flap, you just use your nail and you pick it down from the top there. So you can see it move in there. Okay. Also, we have two USB ports at the back. So if I wanted a wired connection, all I would have to do is get a compatible USB to Ethernet adapter, and this one is compatible. If you're interested in the model number there, it's there. Again, you can get these off places like eBay and Amazon really cheaply for under £10. And then, that's all we need to do. That will give us a wired connection. The problem is you're then gonna to have to run this cable around the house, and that's the part that can look messy. So it is very involved, but if you're struggling with your Wi-Fi signal, then that's one thing that you can do. You can run an Ethernet cable. The other thing to look into is power line adapters, and they actually use the electricity cables in your house to push the ethernet signal through. They also work very well. But in this video right now, I'm gonna be using a Wi-Fi connection because my router is actually just downstairs underneath this room here, so I've got a good signal. And if you have a look here, you can actually see that I've got a good signal because it tells you the signal strength. If you look at some of the others, you can see it's just down to one bar. These would be my neighbors, but in my instance, I've got full bar up here. So I'm gonna tap that, and now it's gonna ask me to put in that password. So remember the one I was talking about here, this wireless key? I'm gonna put in the one for the router I'm using. It's not this one here, don't worry, I'm not giving my security details away. This router is not in use. So I'm gonna put that in now off camera. Right, and now I'm pressed OK and it's gonna try and connect. So it's saying Wii U, network device, internet. While it's doing that, before that, you could also read the instructions on the TV screen. So if anything's not clear here, you can get further instructions on the TV screen. There we go, the connection test was successful. The connection test cannot check whether you can connect to other users. To do so, try connecting with compatible software. So right now, it's saying we're connected to the internet, but you don't really know how good the connection is just yet. The details for this network have been saved as connection one. If, for example, you had other connections in your house, or you might wanna use a mobile hotspot from your mobile cell phone, then you could save that to connection two, or three, or whatever. You can have a whole list of connections. Okay, now, a user will now be added to this console. If you are under the age of 18, please have an adult read this and configure the settings for you. So this is where we are now going to set up the user. Setting up a user for each person who plays on the Wii U console will allow them to manage save data and play records individually. So for example, if you had a son and a daughter and they both like playing Mario Kart 8, if one plays a lot more than the other, then they can both have their own save. So if your son plays it a lot and your daughter doesn't, and your son's got far in the game, when he turns on the Wii U, he can sign in as himself, and then he will be far in that game, while your daughter, when she signs in, she won't be as far, so she can sign in as herself as well. Right now, there's no user set up on this because it's been completely reset, so we're gonna have to start by just installing the main user, and then you can do secondary users after that. And the process will differ depending on whether or not you have a network ID from Nintendo, so a Nintendo network ID. Basically, if you've already set up yourself on something else before, like if you had a Nintendo 2DS, for example, and you've already got a Nintendo Network ID, then you can just press yes, and then you can enter it in. So let me just go there, and it says, if you link an existing ID, the Me and Nintendo eShop funds linked to the ID will be available to use on your Wii U console. So for example, you can use the same funds. So if you've already got maybe 50 pounds, on your network ID from your Nintendo 2DS, then link it up to here as well. And when you go to the eShop, you can use it on here or you can use it on the Nintendo 2DS. Do you want to use your ID on this Wii U console? If you link the ID to this Wii U console, you will not be able to link it to another Wii U console afterwards. So for example, if I was to go yes, it's now gonna ask me to let your network ID to add a user. Right, and now it's gonna ask you to enter the ID to link to the user. Well, in this instance, this is a complete setup on someone that hasn't had a Nintendo account before. So I'm gonna to go to cancel, and I'm gonna do it from where we did it before. So let's start again. Right, next. A new user should be added by an adult. 
setting up a player, I've done that one. The next step will process, will differ. So do you have a Nintendo Network ID? I'm gonna press no. First of all, let's register a user, me. Here you can create me characters, character chores of people that appear in games and interact with your friends and family. So there you go, you can see it's up on screen there, that's what it's going to look like. So you can make yourself old or young or mimic yourself. You can also take pictures of yourself on this little camera and then it will come up with a me character that will look similar to yourself. Well, similar in a sort of cartoon way. Right, so create or receive. So let's create one. Create me from features. Create me from a photo, or you can connect to a 3DS or scan a QR code. Well, let's just create me from features. So, mail, obviously this is going to be different on what you're going to do. And this is where, for example, you can choose the colour of your skin tone, etc. You can do, for example, your hair up here. Yeah, you get the idea. You can do your nose different, your eyes different. Yeah, blue eyes, eyebrows, your lips. Do yourself with red lips, happy, sad, whatever. Uh, and also you can do kind of your weight and size. So look tall, small. You can see it moving on TV there as well. And also your weight as well. Larger, slimmer. Then just go to next. Nickname. So you've got to put a nickname in for yourself. Okay, nickname. Let's see if I can do my mate Vince. My mate Vince? No, so my mate Vink. Can't quite fit it all in. Okay, remember this can be changed later anyway. And let's go to register. Do you want to register this as your me? Yeah, that will do. You can spend more time on it at a later stage to get it looking more like yourself. Or take a picture of yourself and it's quite interesting to see what Nintendo think you look like in a me version. You can change your me later on. Okay, fine. Creating a link in a network ID, Nintendo Network ID, allows you to access software downloads and use online communication in games along with a range of other services. So if you have a look now, there's a lot of detail on screen there and I can use the right analog stick to scroll down. So for example, your friends list and your Nintendo eShop, you're going to have to have a Nintendo account to do all of this. So have a good read of that and then you will know whether you want to or not. Most people do because it's just nice to be able to play online. And also, if you want to buy games from, for example, the Virtual Console, which has got all the old Wii games and older, and some of them are only about £5, so it's quite fun to have them stored as well, but you will need the eShop to do that. You can link a Nintendo Network ID at any time by the user settings. You can set parental control restrictions for individuals using the purchase of software, internet, browsing, online communication and games, etc. Please configure these settings if children will be using the console. So if you're setting up your son and daughter on this and you've put £100 on it for certain games that you want to buy in the future, you don't want them to come along and just buy all their sort of games and then you're left with no money left in the account. So it would be worth pressing configure if you're setting this up for other people. Now it says the user has been added. Next, please configure parental controls. Now, if you're under the age of 18, please have an adult read this and configure settings for you. Parents or legal guardians can configure parental control settings to restrict certain Wii U features which they may deem unsuitable for children. For example, games. If you have a look at these games here, that's 3-year-old, three 3-year-old three and 7-year-old. Other games will be an 18, so you might not want your children playing 18 games. So I'm just going to go to next. So this is where you're going to create a four-digit pin which will be used to prevent access to restricted functions. Okay, so I'm going to press next. Now I'm just going to do this off camera. It will probably ask me to enter it twice. And it's now asking me to enter the pin again. Obviously, do something that you're going to remember and not going to forget straight away. Select a secret question to use in case you forget your pin. What did you call your first pet? Where were you born? What's your favorite sports team? What was your favorite birthday present? So you can just go down there now and you can select whatever question you're more likely to remember in the future. So for example, where were you born? So say, so enter the answer to the secret question using at least four characters where you were born. Now I can't show you this bit because it says the secret answer. Remember this is exactly as shown. If your answer is not an exact match, you will not be granted access. Then I have to press OK. Pin and secret question setup complete. From now on, you will need to enter your pin to modify certain user settings, delete all content and settings, or perform other important functions. Okay. 
Now you have the option to register an email address. If you register an email address, you can use it to reset your PIN should you forget it and the answer to your secret question. So if you're likely to forget your PIN, you can register an email address. Please enter an email address that only parents or guardians can access following the guide on the TV screen. So for example, now it will give you more details of what you can do up on screen. I'm just gonna press okay. Right, I'm actually not gonna enter in an email address, so I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna go to cancel. Configure restrictions for each user referring to the information on the TV. Right, game rating. So this is where you will change and move it from here where they can only do three games up to seven, so that would be Splatoon, PG, 12, 15, 16, all the way up to 18. Okay, so this will basically have everything allowed. If your child was around about 15 years of age, then you could have it, you know, here and then or here, and then it's allowing the 15 years. If they were only 11 or 12, so you know your own children, what they're able to watch or not. Obviously, very young children, if you were to have it around there, then it's going to be fine. But that's your choice, you decide. Now, because remember I didn't put any game rating on, the padlock is unlocked, so basically I can play any game on this. If you don't want online interaction in games, you will leave it like that. I want online interaction, I want the internet browser, I'm gonna turn these all off, but obviously this depends on the age of the person you're setting up for. Me versus posting and viewing restricted, so that, right. Restrict the use of Miiverse, so I'm just gonna put do not restrict, or you can restrict posting only, or restrict viewing and posting. So what you can do is, remember, this is setting it up now for me, my mate Vince, but when I'm setting my son or daughter up on this, I'm not gonna be checking all these boxes. I'm gonna have some of them where they can't, you know, maybe, for example, on the browser, then all I've gotta do is hit that one when I'm setting them up, and then they won't have access to the internet browser. So I'm just gonna turn these all off. Remember, if you wanna know more about them, just use the right analog stick, and it says there, online interaction in games, tells you about it, Wii U shopping services, Miiverse, yeah? So just take your time, read all that, and then it will become more clear. So I'm gonna to go to save. So right now, this has got pretty much unrestricted everything on it, because everything's been, all the parental controls have been turned off. Right, so parental control settings, if you wanna change it at a later stage, that's where you would go. Right now, I'm gonna to go to quit. You will be able to use quick start the next time you turn the Wii U gamepad on using the power button or home. So you can turn it on via the power button or by pressing home. Go to next. When quick start is enabled, you can quickly start software from a list of recently used titles. So if you were to always play Mario Kart, you can use the quick start to get to that. The gamepad will also be able to receive notifications while it's turned off. The Wii U gamepad will turn on automatically to display received notifications. You can disable automatic display at any time by selecting system settings, power settings, quick start settings and display notifications automatically. When quick start is enabled, the console must perform operations periodically while it is powered down. Would you like to enable quick start? Well, I'm gonna enable it because then I can do my updates and stuff. It can just do it overnight. I don't have to update it. But if you don't want it to do stuff automatically, you would press disable. I'm gonna just enable it. The power LED will turn orange while standby functions are being performed. Please only connect or disconnect the AC adapter or USB storage devices while the power LED is red or off. Okay, so when it's doing its thing, when I turn this off, that battery light will be off once it's charged up. But when it starts actually performing a standby function, then it will light up there. So even when you're not using it and it's just sitting in the corner of the room, you might see that light come on every now and then. You can configure various quick start settings under the power settings in system settings. Okay. Right, to conserve energy, the Wii U console has been set to power down automatically if left unused for a one hour period. Please be aware that if the console powers down during a game, any unsaved data will be lost. So if you were like, for example, a certain amount of way through Mario Kart 8, just as an example, and you were to put it on pause, and if you were to leave it there for more than an hour, well, you're gonna lose that save information then because it's gonna shut itself down. You can change this to two hours, three hours, four hours, etc in the settings. I'm just gonna leave it on what they recommend. Right, so now 
that is our home screen there. And if you have a look, you can see that the one on the TV is actually different from here. If I was to press this button here, you can see that it swaps. So now what was on the TV is now my gamepad, and what was on the gamepad is now on the TV. You can also do it by pressing X. So you can see it swapping. Right, okay, so moving your way around the screen here, you can just hit these side buttons or you can use the left analog stick. So as you can see, you've got plenty of folders to create there. So at the moment, you can see there's not much here at all, but if I wanted Netflix, then that will take up another icon. If I wanted YouTube, that would take up another icon, but I will need to go to the shop for that. And to do the shop, I'm gonna have to have a Nintendo Network ID. So if I was to press A to start, it says a Nintendo network ID is required in order to use this software. Would you like to link one now? Link. So for most features, you are gonna need a Nintendo network ID. So it's restricted by the parental control, so I need to enter in the pin number that I did earlier. So now I've entered in the pin. And it's saying a Nintendo Network ID will now be linked to this user, my mate Vink. If you're under the age of 18, you will have to have an adult do this for you. Do you have a Nintendo Network ID? No. Let's create a new Nintendo Network ID. It says up here, please read the documents carefully. If you agree to the terms, select the corresponding on-screen button. Press agree or decline. If you decline, then you're not going to be able to get the Nintendo Network ID. So again, you should be reading all that or scanning through it at least. I accept. This will create a network ID and link it to the user. Please enter the user information. And it says here, this is what I need to do on screen. So if you look closely there, date of birth, gender, region, time zone, name to use for ID, password and email address. So this is going to take quite some time. So this is where I'm going to be entering my date of birth and the other information. Obviously, I'm going to be doing this all off camera. And then you just need to follow the prompts on the screen. Okay, so I've now set up a Nintendo ID for myself on this. And just to show you it working, if I was to go to the Nintendo eShop now, you will see I can get access to it. So I'm going to use a stylus this time, remember, just use your finger or a stylus. So if you're entering, for example, email addresses and stuff, it is easier to use a stylus. Right, so this one takes a little while here. So they give you a little game that you can match up just while it's entering into the shop. You can match up the, the pictures here if you have enough time. Right, welcome to Nintendo eShop here. You can buy and download software, view videos about your favorite titles and more. Okay, so you'll just have to do this the first time. You won't have to do it every single time you go into it. So I'm just gonna to have to okay that again. Now you can choose whether or not to receive Nintendo eShop notifications, which may include commercial inv information such as marketing or advertising messages. Well, I'm gonna opt out because I don't wanna get constant notifications about stuff. I can always go into the Nintendo eShop to read the news anyway. You have chosen not to receive notifications, okay. Remember, none of this is final. You can always change this in the settings later on anyway. Okay, so here we have, for example, new releases, special offers. So if you wanted Zelda now, you can click on Zelda. This is Breath of the Wild, the one that's come out on the Nintendo Switch as well. And it will tell you the price. It's really expensive. It's $59.99. Okay, tells you a little bit about it. Now, it says here required space you need 11 gigabytes for this so you can see now if you went for the white Wii U you already won't have enough space to download Zelda you will have to use an external hard drive as I said before I do another video on that so it's not the end of the world you can actually do it relatively cheaply so basically space in install location so out of the 32 gigabytes we've only got 25.3 gigabytes to actually use because the software, the operating system itself takes up, it looks like about seven, or just under seven, 6.7 7 gigabytes. So even now, if we were to get a few games, you can see if you were to get Zelda and a few other big games, you're gonna run out of space even on the 32 gigabytes model. And this is the biggest 
storage option there is. So it looks like even on the Wii U, if you want to download the games digitally, not on a disc, but digitally, so disc is fine, but if you want to do it via the Nintendo eShop, then it looks like you are going to have to buy yourself an external hard drive because you will run out pretty quickly. So that's it, basically, if you were then just to go to proceed to the purchase screen, this is where you can add funds and you know your credit card information and stuff like that. So it's telling me it's a 12, so remember those software settings earlier, if we put the age rating that you weren't allowed 12, well you wouldn't be allowed to play this game. Okay, and this is it, the balance is 59.99, you add funds or pay remainder by credit card, etc. So this is where you can get the games. Now obviously I don't want the games, so I'm just going to go to back. I just want to show you some of the virtual consoles as well. So you can get a lot cheaper games now as well so if we were to go to this is where applications this is where you would download stuff like YouTube and Netflix and obviously all that is going to be free to do so Crunchyroll, Napster, YouTube, Netflix yeah. so now I'm going to look at gaming classics from the past so let's say if there was something on the uh, Super NES that you wanted to look at there you go, you've got all these games here, and you can see the price of them, £5.49. And remember as well, you're going to be playing them on a widescreen TV, so it will look kind of nice. Now, whether or not things like Wii graphics and the graphics from these are better on the Wii U, well, it depends. If you were to connect up your previous Wii that you had via HDMI, then it's going to be the same picture. But if you were using Composite, then it's going to look better via the HDMI cable, so in some instances the older games will look better on the Wii U. Yeah, Mega Man, there you go, 549, Street Fighter 2, 549, so you can see you can get these, and if I was to click on Street Fighter, let's see how much storage space this would take up, probably very little. Right, so this is only going to take up 70 megabytes, so it's tiny. Remember I said 1,000 megabytes to 1 gigabyte? So games like this, you could buy loads of them and there'll still be plenty of room, even on the white Wii U as well. Right, okay, so that's basically the Nintendo eShop. Let's now get a couple of controllers synced up to it. I want to sync up this Wii U Pro Controller. You don't get this with the Wii U. When you buy it, you have to buy this separately. I also want to sync up my old Wii Remote as well. And this has got the Motion Plus at the bottom as well. Because on some games, you will need to have this added to it. Or you need the newer Wii Remote, so the Wii Remote Plus. Right, to sync it up is really easy. All we have to do is tap this little button here. So tap it. And now it's going to come up here and it says, press the sync button on the controller you wish to pair. So, for example, on this Wii U Pro controller, there's a little red button there. If you have trouble doing it with your finger, just again use the stylus to press it in, but I can press it no problem. So, I'm just going to press that in there, and now you can see it's trying to sync up with it. And it should go to player one because this will be the first controller that's connected. And there you go. Can you see now? I've got four lights here for four players, but it's only lit up under player one. Yeah. And if you have a look on screen there, you can see now player one, I've got a full battery. So this is fully charged. Now I'm going to do the same again on the Wii remote. So on this one, some of them have the button on the outside, the newer ones, but on these older ones, the button's in the battery compartment. And it's this little red button here. So I'm just going to press that. And now hopefully that will start flashing and it should pair up. There we go. And now it's gone to two because this is a second controller. And there we have, you see in red, and you can see the battery is nearly full, just one, one bit down. So it gives you a battery indication and also it gives you the player indication as well by looking at this. Now, it will only be player one that will be able to control the menu. Press the home button here and you can go to controller settings. And let's say if I want to change the order, I can go to settings, change order, and now I want this Wii remote to be player one because I want to see if the sensor bar is working on top. So now it says press A on each controller. So I'm going to press A, and there you go. That is now player one, and I'm going to press A on here, and this will be now player two because they've already been synced up. 
And now I'm just going to go to B to exit that. B again. B again. And I'm just going to go to Wii U menu. Now, if we have a look here, hopefully now, there you go. You can see now when I use my remote here, can you see that the hand is up on screen here and I can select different things. If you want to swap screens, remember you can just press that and then this screen will be up on the TV. Right, and now if you have a look, you see I can select things here and just press the A. Or, of course, you can select things from the gamepad as well. Because this is now player two, I can't select anything. You can see that there's a red hand moving around the place, but it's kind of see-through and nothing's highlighting when I'm going over it, unlike the player one here, which is highlighting. So it's only player one that can do the things on the screen. Okay, so now let's put a game in. The game we're going to be doing is going to be Mario Kart 8, and this is a Wii U game. And when we put it in, we want to put it in with the label side facing the top of the Wii U. Okay, so if you see there, Wii U, we want the label side on top. So it's going to go in like that, and it takes it in for you. You just offer it up and then the Wii U brings it in. Now, if you ever want to move your Wii U console around the place, always take the disc out of it. It's just good practice not to leave the disc in there when you're moving it. It's fine if you're not moving it, it can stay in there, but when you want to move it, just take it out. So if you can see up the top now, we've now got a new icon, which is that one for Mario Kart 8, and I'm going to use the gamepad for this. So let's swap over and go to Mario Kart 8 using the left analog stick and I'm going to press A. On Nintendo most things are A to enter. Okay, so it's preparing the update. The first time you put in most games, often they will have an update, but then once you've done that first update, they might only get updated once every few months. So it says download and update to system memory. So I'm just going to go to uh, start software. I'm just going to let that do it in the background. To install the update, please start the software again after the update download is complete. And remember you've got volume here, see, as well as the TV. And we've got a mic here for your online gaming. Yeah, so the volume control you see. Press A to start, and we just do a single player. Obviously you can choose your character and your vehicle and stuff like that, I've just whizzed through this to make it quicker. And believe it or not, this feels really comfortable. It's nice and light, it's not too heavy, and the uh, the controls just feel real comfortable. Now if you have a look here, can you see what's happening? It's coming up on the screen there, and we're just using this as a controller. Or we can change that. If we tap up here, we can now play it on here. Or, if we tap again, we can just have it so the racetracks here, and we can play it, for example, up on the screen on the TV, and we can just look at this for additional information. Now every game obviously will have different controls, in this one is A to accelerate, you can use R or ZR to drift round a corner and you can use L or ZL to fire your weapon. And B is going to be brake and reverse. You can also use the directional pad if you don't like using the analog stick and also you can use motion control. So if I was to press that one there, the plus button, you see here I can just tap on motion controls and then go to continue and now if you have a look up on screen or let's get rid of that let's put it on here you can see now I'm using motion control to turn so younger children might prefer motion control personally I prefer the analog sticks okay to change back again just tap stick controls and then go to continue. And it's up to you how you play it then. So tap it there and then, yeah, that might be quite nice there because you can have your main screen up here and then you can just look down here and you can see your character. And then it could be your horn. 
and it has your place here. So there you go, you get the idea of how to play it. Now, distance wise, unfortunately, in my house, this won't work very far. So let me just take the camera now and just to show you what happens when you go out of range. So ideally, it would be great if this worked, for example, all over your house, because then you could use this a bit like the Nintendo Switch. It's just that you've got this in your part of your house and then you can use this everywhere in your house. That would be great. Obviously, Nintendo Switch, you can then take it outside and go to school or holiday or whatever and still use it. This has to be within range of this because it's using the 5 gigahertz channel between here to communicate with here. And that channel is really good for transmitting information because obviously there's a huge amount of data flowing between here and here. But it's not very good when it comes to distance. So it would be great if it worked all over the house, but unfortunately, it doesn't work very far at all. So right now, if I was just to leave this room here, and you can see, as soon as I just go a few steps away, there you go, it's starting to break up. Can you see now? It's lost a signal, and it says here, the connection with the Wii U console has been lost, and we are only one, two, three, four, we're about six steps away. So as you can see, that isn't great whatsoever, but it will vary on the interference in your house. If you haven't got much other wireless technology, then it's gonna work a lot further. If you're just in a big room, then it's gonna be fine. It's things like walls and stuff that really affect it. Right, okay, so it's regained sync now because we're right next to it. So I'm gonna press A, and again, you can carry on using it. Right, so, Right, so we're back on motion control now for some reason. So let me just get out of that, go to stick control, continue. Right, so now you see motion control is doing nothing, we're purely on the stick. Okay, so that's how you play a Wii U game, and now I'm gonna show you how to play a Wii game. So I'm gonna go to home, and I'm gonna go to close software. Close the currently suspended software, close. Now, you see I use that as a controller, but obviously I've also connected up my pro controller so I could have used that as a controller as this might be more usable for a lot of people because it's small. Again, you can also use the Wii remote as a controller. So right now I'm gonna go to a Wii game and we're gonna play, well let's do Mario Kart again but this time we'll do it on the Wii. Right, so I'm gonna take it out by just pressing the eject button which is the button up the top. and the disc brings itself out and you just need to put it that last little bit, yeah? Like that. So always be careful when you're handling discs, it's best to either put your finger in the middle or hold them on the edge there, otherwise you get fingerprints all over them. Then label side up, so facing that way. Now this is where you're going to need a Wii controller, but again you can pick these up really cheap now. Remember this video was done in 2017. Right, so I'm going to switch the thing, and now if you have a look up here, so I'm just going to hover over that and press A. You will now be transferred to the Wii menu. The Wii menu is used to play Wii software. You will need a Wii remote and a sensor bar. Well I've got that, and I've got the sensor bar. So let's go down to next. Please pair a Wii remote if you haven't already done so. Well, I've already done it, so I'm gonna to go to continue. The TV only. There we go. So now, if you were an owner of a Wii before, you should recognize the Wii menu. It's exactly the same as it was if you're playing on a Wii. So it's kind of like there's a mini Wii built into the Wii U. Right, it says press A to continue. And there we go, you can see now the old Wii menu. And now I can just go up to Mario Kart and it will take me to the game. Or if I wanted to get back to Wii U, I would just hover over this bit here that says Wii U menu. So let's go up to Mario Kart for the Wii. And you can see now that there's nothing on the gamepad, it's just on the TV. So I think the biggest shame of the Wii U is the distance from here to here because if it was to be a stronger signal that could work throughout the house, I think the gamepad would get a lot more use and I think the Wii U would have sold a lot better. Right, so you can do multiplayer because remember we can have numerous controllers connected up to this if you've got the original Wii remotes, but here I'm just gonna do one player. 
and you can also use this as motion control so for example if you get one of those steering wheels I would have to take this bottom bit off but you can get the steering wheels for a pound or two and it doesn't actually do anything it's just a lump of plastic but it's just a bit more comfortable to hold when you're when you're steering so I'm going to go to uh, Grand Prix So I've got my hand around the strap just so it doesn't go flying off. On a game like this it's not so much necessary. Right and as you can see, you can see the motion controls work in there and nice and accurate. Drifting around the corner. And then to use the weapon in this instance we just do the directional pad, you see. There we go, and it tells you there, if you press the plus button, it tells you what the controls are. Oh, well, that got me. But okay, so you get the idea of it. That's how you play Wii games. Now, to exit that, we're just going to tap home. And you can see here it says Wii menu or reset. So we're going to go to Wii menu and press A. And now we're going to go to here, Wii U menu. Go to start. And that's going to bring us back to the Wii U menu so you can play Wii U games again. Or watch Netflix and YouTube and stuff like that. So when I turn it back to the Wii menu there, it's asking for me to sign into the network ID and now it's saying your email address has not been confirmed yet please see the instructions provided in the email that was sent to you so basically what I need to do now is I need to go into my computer and then I need to go and get the confirmation code and then when I tap confirmation code it's going to ask me to enter into the gamepad here okay so that's going to be obviously straightforward so I'm just going to click later for the time being The last thing is Amiibos. If you're into collecting your Amiibos so you can get different things in different games. So for example if you were to use this on Mario Kart, I haven't done it yet, but I think it's going to change the outfit of the Mario Kart driver. And then to do it, you see this is where you place your Amiibo here. So you would place this on here and then it will register it in the game. Plenty of other things as well. If you want to use the internet browser, then you tap that one there. Right, okay, so this is the Internet Explorer, and for example, we can have it where it just works on the gamepad, and if you have a look there, we've got curtains up on screen. If you were to press X, then you see whatever you see here will be up on screen. So it depends. If you want to do something private, you can press X, and then it will draw the curtains on the screen. If you want to use it on the big screen, then that's fine. So if I was to tap Google, it will now open up Google. There you go, press X, and you can't see it there. Right, and home again, just tap home. And then Wii U menu. Also, you can have a look at the Wii U manual if you want to read up on other things. Okay, so that's the basic features of the Wii U. Obviously, there's plenty of other things you can do on it, but that video there showed you how to set up all the cables, how to do the initial setup, how to play a game, how to do the Wi-Fi, how to potentially buy a game from the eShop. Last thing, last thing is just turning it off. So we can either hold down the power button here or just tap the power button on the console. So let's try it from the gamepad. Holding it down now. You can hear the music's gone. And now it's turned itself off and it's come up with no signal on the TV. And in another few seconds that should go to red. There we go, so that's gone to red now. It's got a light on it because it's still got a disc in there. And now to turn it on again, we can either hit the home button, the power on button here, or the power button there. So let's try it just now, just power up by tapping that. You will now be transferred to the Wii U menu. There we go, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if it's helped you out. I appreciate it was a long video, but hopefully you found it thorough. And please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.